to what high kneel canoe paddlers are doing, the high kneel canoe. And all their power was up front and it was careful. Now if you put too much power down, what happens is you sink the boat or you fall in the water if you're a high kneel canoe. And then what happens is they were just grabbing up. And then you look at the Tahitians, they're just grabbed all up front. Everything was established up front. And so and then again, even I started looking at the Chinese as far as that dragon boat is concerned, even though their bodies are kind of, what they were doing is all their power is up front and then they would just boom. So everything was happening up front. And if you get way out there too much, then you're, you're, right. just, you're just bracing yourself. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, what you're doing, you're disconnecting, you're disconnecting your core. And you know, what you're doing, you're putting, you're putting all that. You're, you're now establishing a point of leverage off your shoulders. So, like, if your top hand was here, yeah. and you would impact this shoulder, this back, your part of this back would actually get impacted. So, so again, so this this whole bilateral element that comes across. So you want to make sure you don't want this. You want this to activate all of that, right? So what happens is if we when we rotated back in the day, yeah. this was the, really the only thing we were really working at. So yeah, like it was all, all yeah. So it's interesting. I had my I had I had shoulder I had shoulder problems on my left shoulder, and I had a problem with my right head flexor. Imagine that, right? And that was from this, yeah, yeah. you know? And that was because I would, I would first load all the weight of that canoe onto my shoulder, and then I would kick the boat, and I would transfer all that weight from here to here. So all of this was not even working. I mean, it made it, but it was not fully activated, right? Yeah. So you get overly fatigued. And next thing you know, you get problems, you got lower back issues, you get shoulder problems, you're like the KT tape industry is like, hey, we love you, buy more KT tape. You know, and so that's the that's the reason. Now what we're doing is by reaching just as far as we're allowed to, what our feet allow us to. You may be able to the reach just maybe right. That's it. Yeah. Right in front of your feet. That's it for the most part. Right? You're not worried about getting this big old positive angle. Again, that came from the old school ways of, of the thought the school thought of stabbing that deal and then going like that, and that's it. And that was it. See, keep your top hand right in front of you the whole time. You would go in, you would rotate, right, and this was very. It was a derivative or uh, uh, an element of people who surf ski and did really well on these big boats because they know how to feel. But when you get a layman who doesn't surf ski, which is the majority of folks, you teach them that stroke, they don't know what it is that they're feeling. So what they do is they just and so they collapse, right? And at the same time, even the guys like, you know, like, you guys who do K1 or surf ski, you know, even if they're doing this, they're putting undue stress on their shoulder. They're not activating their core. Like uh, Daryl mentioned, like he gave me a call. He's like, yeah, I've been powered for 30 years, and it's the first time I ever felt my core. You know, and it, it, which is great because that's what you want. You want to use this to activate that forward mobility. You don't want, you know, I mean, the idea is yes, you could do this. You could do this to make the boat move forward, but can't, does it mitigate fatigue over time? You know? The efficiency of like exactly. martial arts. Just everything. Exactly. Uh, you know, that's what paddling for me now is it is more like martial arts, right? You've got senseis, meaning you've got people who are senior to you that are still paddling, still growing. You know, I don't consider myself as coach. You know, I consider myself as paddler. And if I'm just someone senior, it just means at some point that person that I'm senior to will be a senior to me. They're going to find out something that I don't know and they're going to teach me. So that's the beautiful thing about paddling, right? Yeah, and it's the same with martial arts. It's the same thing with martial arts. You know, somebody who's a quote-unquote master will eventually become the student again because somebody who's always better, right? And they say, oh, check this out. This is what I learned. You know? But if uh, someone who's good at it, they hardly look like they're working. Right, right. Yeah. but they are working. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's just that they understand where to put the work at, right? Oh, okay. And it's like, cool. I look at uh, Clayton from uh, Oceanside, the guy with the dreadlocks, phenomenal paddler, great guy. And he's on the one man. He's just... And you don't think he's moving, you know, but his, his, everything is, yeah, he's shredded. He's, he's completely shredded, and he's just like, all right. But all his, all that energy is happening into, into the, into canoe versus being on top of it, where it's just kind of like, uh, so he's being careful, he's being careful, he's grabbing, and he's just maintaining, maintaining that, that, that element of being on top of the water versus driving down into the water. So, but it's, it bet you it seems like it's, it's such a, a fine uh, sensitivity. It's like you have to get a feel for it. Absolutely. Like, you know what you're shooting for. Yeah. You gotta learn to feel it. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing about when you get this, when you get on the traditionals, you're gonna feel hardness right out the get. Right. It's a lot harder to do that, feel that feel in the unlimited or even on the one man. 
just because you don't have that kind of weight. But in the traditionals, you can be like, okay. Now that's that's another thing. It becomes a false positive. So no matter where you put the blade in, you're always gonna feel that bite, yeah. right? Feel like your muscle on it. Right. So no matter where, it just now it just comes down. Okay, who gets tired first? And a guy who gets tired first is usually the guy that's putting their power in the back because they're trying to lift themselves up at the same time. Instead of grabbing and pulling themselves forward, they're driving themselves downward and then picking themselves up again. So that's the thing, right? That's what the, 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 the benefit and the detriment of the heavier boats is that you, you're always going to feel hardness no matter where, right? Whereas in the limited or in the one man, you find that grab. Oh, awesome. Uh, I do. Okay, thank you. You find, yeah. So again, it's about once you grab, it's just enough. You feel that blade just enough to move yourself forward, right? Because you want, you don't want to go down and then try to lift yourself up. You don't see skiers go, I mean, you know, when you see skiers, they don't go, ah, ah, you know, they go, they grab and they go, shh, 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 right? Cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be, uh, I know. I'm going to be working on it. Good, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. You get all that. Uh, do you believe that a person such as Aaron, a muscular guy, will be a lot better in a canoe than somebody who's not muscular? It, it, it all depends. I, I could say sometimes, I gotta be honest, if I see someone who's muscular, I get a little worried because what they're gonna associate what got them as far as what got them their strength is what they do on land, meaning with the weights and the explosion, because that's a lot of, right? And so, because I used to be that guy. I used to be that guy who did powerlifting. I used to think like, okay, I need to really just put all that in there and just really just get that get that perceived effort. Whereas now it's like, no way, I would never paddle like I used to when I was a power lifter. So what exercise would you say to do to get better in this form of paddling? As far as exercise is concerned? Yeah, to develop muscle. Go to paddlesynergy.com, sign up for a class. <laughs> That's a group program. We got a group program for that. But no, just the kind of, kidding aside. That's the truth, though. That we have that we have that. But areas that have primarily that deal with pulling type workouts, areas that concentrate primarily in the psoas area up to your core planks. It's a huge one. Planks is a definitely probably if the easiest one to say because that activates your core and teaches you how to breathe when you start feeling that lactic acid build up and you associate that breathing with with relief. And that's something where when you're activating this core and this body over a period of time, breathing in, you're like, oh, okay, I can get back, I get, I can get a couple strokes in, just like if you're doing planks. So the biggest one I would say is planks. Um, other thing is anything with a kettlebell, but you're incorporating your hips, kettlebell swings is a really good one. Um, and, and again, anything that really helps facilitate some kind of pulling and action in where you're using your hips or you're incorporating your core. I wouldn't recommend doing any kind of push workout because then that kind of then gives you that. And you can do it, but like bench press and stuff like that to where you're like, that's not what we're doing on the canoe. So anything we're pulling and incorporating core, any of those kind of workouts.